Hey YouTube, how you guys doing tonight? Kevin here coming at you with another video. So, it is after Christmas, so Merry Christmas to everybody. Um, and it is, uh, well, we're getting back into the swing of things now that we're uh, on the upward sw uh, swing of that. So tonight's Monday, so working on, well, you guys heard this motor right here run. We already fired this motor up. This motor runs, and it runs good. This motor right here is the one off the Harvey Spooner bike. And, um... So, this is the donated one. This is the one that came with Harvey Spooner's bike. And, well, this one's got some issues with it. So, here's the carburetor that came off of it. I had dumped this in the ultrasonic cleaner when I did that carburetor. And here's what I wanted to show you guys. So, on this engine right here, we have a broken case. So you can see it's been broken for a while right here. So, that's one of the top mounts. So, the engine block is broken. And it's got a whole bunch of dirt and debris inside that intake right there. See that? And I think that contributed to the lack of compression on this. I think that intake valve is held open and a whole bunch of debris got in there. So I'm trying to figure out what to do here uh, with the bikes. And you can see that someone drilled through the hole, through the kickstarter shaft. It's all stripped out. It's junk. So we have the kickstarter shaft automatically. The case is broken up there. I can't leave that like that. And the intake is filled up with caca. Yes, this tonight's word of the night is caca. And uh, so, yeah, that's where I'm at with that. Now, I took the engine. This engine came off. This bike right here. I got this uh, chalked up out here for the video to show you guys. And I started to remove some of the paint that was on it. Someone had brutally painted it, and then I took the paint off the gas tank. So this is what the tank looked like without that purple color on it, okay? And it stripped off some of the actual blue paint, but it was blue, and that's what it looked like. Now, um, the inside of the tank looked good from the bird's eye view looking in, but was anything but okay. So underneath on the tank, and I've been working on it, I, I have to clean it up some more but I've been brazen there is all holes on this side of the tank so this tank is technically a rusty holy tank at the bottom so when you look down in the, the whole top part looks like brand new going down but further down is where the rot was only on that side not the petcock side which brings us to this bike this bike right here has a good rear end on it the fender is junk. It's not only dented up top here, but it's also split right there. The forks are all bent like a pretzel. <laughs> so we, we got some stuff here, guys. We got to figure this stuff out. So a couple of parts came in for the bike. So let's take a look and see what we got. Okay. So we got some parts that came in right here. All genuine Honda stuff, by the way, guys. I got the genuine Honda kickstand. Uh, kick yeah. A brand new shiny kick -a stand right there. We need a kick -a stand. Okay. A brand spanking new kick -a stand to bolt. So I'll put this up here, part number right there for the kickstand. That was for the uh, for this bolt right here, by the way, and the kickstand itself. Okay, so that's for the kickstand. That bolt goes right through here. It's a shoulder bolt. On the back side, and I don't know why they sent me so many of these, and now I got extras, but. Here's the part number right here. Okay. And I now have a couple left. Yep. All the same part numbers. Okay, so I got two of those left. I got the factory Honda nut. And this part right here is for the spring.
and now we have the spring the return spring for the uh, which we call it there for the bike so we have that the next thing I got give you guys the part number first right there and this one's gonna take a little bit to open up you can always tell good Honda stuff they package it really really well Get some skizzes. Open this thing up this way. Okay, that there. That there. Ho oh, ho 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 ho. This guy's. Boy, they really wrapped us up good, huh? Oh, beautiful. And we got ourselves a brand spanking new shiny Offenderum for the back of the bike. Look at that, huh? Oh, she's so pretty. Hey guys, look at you can see me perfectly in this thing. <laughs> that crazy so we got ourselves the fender okay so fender and kickstand we have we have the rubber boot for the air filter assembly it's all in the small stuff guys you know we have a really nice on there right now we have the tail light assembly so we're going to save that and all that stuff is going to go onto this, onto this bike. So the bike that I'm going to fix up is going to be this bike right here. Um, we're going to sandblast that little black stuff back there and paint it, touch it up, and do a lot of cleaning up on this particular bike. So that's where I'm at with the uh, Honda. So I've been getting a lot of uh, emails. Kevin, what's going on with the Hondas? What's going on with the Hondas? Well, I'm not really working on this right now, so this was something I just tried to do earlier and, uh, you know, off camera, see what I could do with it, and, uh, well, that's what I ended up with. But I got yelled at for doing that, too, so uh, no more doing stuff off camera. Oh, and I did clean up the gas cap. Okay. I cleaned the... The petcock looks rusty on the outside, but it, it works. Uh, you can blow through it, and then shut the valve off, and there's nothing comes out of it. And it does move freely now. And then I cleaned up the gas cap a little bit. You can see we're sitting in one spot for very long. But that's what the underside looks like. The second fuel cap I have from this tank looks a little rougher. Um, looks like that. But it's still a good cap. So we'll hold on to that and clean that up at a later date. Okay. So we have a clean carburetor. Engine runs. I just got to adjust it. We have the air filter assembly. I just need the clamp. We have the whole foot peg assembly right there. We have the kickstand for the peg assembly. We've got the pet cock that goes with the carburetor. We have the fuel cap for the tank. We have the rear fender. We have the front fender. It just needs to be cleaned up. And we are pretty much on our way body-wise. For the um, side cover, we have, okay, all right, here we go, all right, I hit the wrong button on my camera, all right, so we, um, this is the cover right here that came off, this was, this tank was this color, and I'm going to show you guys a product that I used to take the paint off, but I left it on too long, and that's what did this, which is okay, because the tank turned out to be junk anyway, but we're going to, we're going to do our best to save it, um, and go from there. Plus, you can get, um, we call it the knockoff tanks for 100 bucks. So I'm thinking I might just go with that and just not use this tank. But I'm going to fix it. I'm going to finish it off and go from there. But you can, you can see it, that's that rust right there you see, that's from heating it up with the uh, torch. That's not, that was like brand new inside. So that's just the stuff that was all over it. Okay, so back on this, uh, this cover right here. 
Okay, so this cover right here has got the um, spray paint all over it. So I'm going to show you guys a product that you can use to remove paint. I'm going to throw that right down, right down the floor. I'm going to grab my can of this stuff, shaking it up. And it's called Goof Off Graffiti. Okay, and this stuff works pretty good. I'm going to show you guys how this works. Just shake it up for a minute. And it's literally called Goof Off Graffiti. Goof Off. Stuff works pretty well. I'm going to get you guys in the stand. But before I do, please take a moment and hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. So when I post the videos, you guys get them. Let's get you guys in the stand and we'll get this paint off. Okay. You guys understand? You can see it's already lifting it up already. Oh, look at that. <laughs> I already broke it up, guys. I already broke up the paint. Look at that, huh? Is that crazy, guys? I don't care about the decal. And just leave it on there for a couple minutes. And then it breaks up and you'll start to see the paint bubbling up. Stuff works amazing. Especially if you have a bike that's like this one, you know. I'm actually taking off the blue paint too. It's going to bring it right down to the plastic. Which is good, so we could paint it to the color to match the bike that we're painting. Oh yeah, look at that. Took all the paint off. Look at that, huh? Wow. Leave it on it for a couple minutes and then just keep doing that. But I took all the paint off, which is awesome because this thing ain't going to be blue, which is really cool. But I want to get all that paint off, you know. Look at that, guys, huh? Then you can prime it, paint it, whatever color you want. How cool is that? Wow. That's nuts. And it, it's literally raising the paint up. And I'm doing this, you're seeing it in real time. So, that's pretty cool. Gets in there and just bubbles it up. I can see it working. Okay, so I just rinsed it off inside the house, and you can see what it looks like now, which is a whole lot better than it did. So we're right down to the nitty gritty, so what we can do is wet sand. This right here with some 2000 grid sandpaper. Get it all nice and smooth. Get that decal off there. But at first I want to um, have that made, remade. So what I'll do is I'll take this down. Because this is going to be painted red. The bike itself, the frame is going to be black. All the parts and pieces are going to be red. The Honda Red color. So that's where that's at. So we have this piece. We have the fender. We have the tail light assembly. Uh, which seems to be in really good shape and the handlebars those are straight that are on there the switches work except for this one over here which needs to be replaced um this piece right here is uh, there was a, a button on it that's missing but that's okay it's there and it does work so there's a lot of stuff on this bike that needs to be um you know picked up and cleaned up and everything else but we're not going to be working on that um, for a while now, so that's on back burner. I did order new um, adjusters for the back. I'm waiting for those to come in as well 
and you can see on this bike right here that this bike has the electrical already on it so this is going to be a good footprint to make even though the shocks are bad on the front we have shocks to put onto it so we're good on that um the next step is to get this into rolling chassis mode we do have the wheels um those had come in you guys saw those on the last video and the piece in the front there needs to be welded this right here goes on the front piece that got broken off there when they dumped it and uh then that will be all set so realistically this bike right here is pretty far along just as it is um we do have a i mean push come to shove i could use that tank even though it's all dented um i'm not i'm not really uh I don't care about the dents, but I do want to make it as nice as I can with what I got first. Then we'll go ahead and redo it. But we're not going to be working on this bike um, on the next few videos. We're going to be working on Elvin's bike and the, um, what do you call it there, and splitting the case on Dave's bike, which is why I'm in here now. So right now what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up the bench. Going to get that all done, get this stuff packaged back up and boxed up. And uh, we're going to be working on Dave's bike. So tonight's Monday night. Tomorrow night is Two Stroke Tuesday. And we'll be doing our live chat. And then Wednesday we're going to be in here. Exclusively splitting the case. On that, um, that TS-125. Which is really super cool. And when you guys see that. So we're going to. Um, what do you call it there? Split that case so we can get that crank out of there. We have a lot of stuff to do with all that I'll keep this all covered up until I'm ready to use it and put it in the box and we have the the nice cover which is awesome these are hard to find especially when they're in this this shape there is no cracks or cra you know anything on this thing this even the little um, pieces that go into the grommets are in excellent condition and it's factory parts so um, that's going to be nice. And then that stuff strips it off. We'll, we can do that. You know, get that all together. Here is the nice kickstand once again for the bike. I'm not restoring this bike, guys. I'm putting this bike together. We're going to use it in the collection. It cannot be too perfect. We're going to paint the frame. Or we're going to paint the tank and the uh, side cover and the front forks. And that's all we're doing to it. And I got the pet clock, the gas cap. Just kind of collecting things. Right now for the bike, the air filter, I got to get the clamp for it because this, you know, it's going to be on there properly, you know. But this is a nice, good quality air filter. I got to clean out the, the uh, nest that's inside there. There's like a little, uh, whatchamacallit there, um, spider nest in there. I can't get this thing apart, so I got to figure out, oh, I see why. They put it on wrong. <laughs> that's all right. Let's take a peek real quick, see if we can get that apart. And because uh, I want to take a look and see if there's an element in there or what exactly is in there. Okay. So I can't pull this apart. Oh, yeah, I can. I just, I think it just moved. Oh, yeah, look at that. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah, look at that. So, guys, it shrunk. <laughs> look what it looks like. Yeah, that thing's deteriorated, but we, we got some material. We're going to make a new foam filter it's all it is is foam but all the the main parts are here the rubber seal is here the, the uh, grit is here and then you can see right here the little nest blow all that out with the air compressor okay you can see right there it's got the baffle the screen that stops big debris like from the foam which will be sitting inside there and then you get yeah like I said you get your o-ring which is your gasket which feels pretty good and then there's a little nub there and a receiver nub for that end right there like so. And then that just fits together like that. And then it clips together like so. And we're good there. Alright, so we have an air filter. just needs an element. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. Okay, this is not going on this particular bike. But I'm going to throw it in the box anyway because this is a carburetor for a um, an earlier um, what do you call it, the bike, and this thing is actually clogged up here and in here, but other than that, the inside of this thing, I'll show you guys real quick. I didn't think it looked too bad at all. You can see how nice and clean it is in there, for the most part, for something that's been sitting around 
for 100 years. This this motor, this carburetor right here came off that black engine. Okay. Just gotta make sure we keep all the parts together. So you guys saw the part numbers on all these, all these bags away. Get that out of here. The rods. Now let me move this out of the way. All right. So before we take this off the bench, we have to do a couple things. Okay. One, we gotta undo this fuel system that I made. If we get that off there, which is everything's so tight. I don't know if it's because it's cold out or what's going on, but let's see if we get this off this way. Okay, fuel supplemental fuel system I like that word supplemental fuel system is off the fuel the fuel um, throttle cable is junk we don't care about that but we are going to get it out of our way so it's like that so it don't catch on anything this ignition coil right here is off the Yamaha GT80 I used it for this uh, purpose because it had the proper plug on it so we're going to take that off and I used a bigger screw in there so I want to take off the screw that's in there now which doesn't go to that at all and put the proper screw back into it that came out of it which is this one okay now that is a brand new spark plug but it is loose I want to put that in and tighten that up Now, I had a feeling this was stripped out, but I couldn't quite tell. Nope, it actually feels good. Okay. Good. And new socket, guys. Okay. And then I got to take a pair of pliers and tighten down that little cap. Only because I had to screw that on there in the first place. Okay. All right. Good. So we're good there. So. Electrical harness, which is on here, um, came off that other bike. This bike has the wiring harness, so we're going to take this off and throw this harness right in the box. Okay. Harness can go right in the box. All right. So, we're good there. What else we have to do? We have to put a wrench on the Kickstarter and tighten up that. Good. Okay. So that part's all squared. We have this side of the engine right here where the magneto is. We got that all all situated. So this uh, flywheel, we have spark, we have charging, we have everything we need on this side. Uh, we are going to have to replace the sprocket at some point, but not right now. And I'm going to go get the cover for the side. Okay, on these screws, there are three different length screws. So we've got the, uh, we're going to put these on. Make sure we get all this to go through properly here. This will keep it protected. There is no gasket on this side. Um, for some reason, they don't put them on mini bikes, and I don't know why. something and stopping that one most likely dirt or debris hmm yep hold on all right just take this here and give it a good old blow it out clean the threads Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> Look at that, huh? Like better. All right. So this engine is complete from A to Zinc. We got a couple things we still have to do to this yet before we can put this thing away. And one of those is... Okay. This thing is going to be sitting until we get ready for it to go onto the bike. So, fuel hose. Make a little flag. Put that onto it. The flags are nice because when you put a flag over something and you can squish it together, it stays right on there. You know what I mean? Now for the intake, I'm going to go around here. I'm just using uh, regular over-the-shelf electrical tape. Nothing crazy. You can use masking tape. Um, out in the other shop there, the yellow shed, I have masking tape, uh, painter's tape. And then I just bring this all in like this. And I'll throw a couple of... Uh, one over the top. This stops any air um, debris from getting into it. Any airborne debris. So if it's dusty out there and the wind picks up, it's not going to bring dirt into the engine. Okay, good. Done. There's that part. Okay. And we have one more thing we have to do to this engine before we can put it away. Um, I'll just move that right out of there. Right here I have the old Magneto. I'm going to throw this in the box. There are two styles of this. There's one with a charge coil here as well, like that I put on that one. This one actually came out of that, but we're not going to use it on this bike. Okay, so put that in the box. Alright, and then we want to take... See, we're, look at that. Look at the bench, huh? We're already cleaning up the bench. It's a thing of beauty right there. All right. Okay. And then, of course, we have these two foot pegs and the kickstand mount. So, what I'm going to do is put that nut back on here. There's another nut here. Okay, now we're going to flip this engine up on end and take off this mount right here because we need this mount for that engine. And it looks like the kickstand was welded. It looks like this mount is not going to work for us, guys. This is not good. The kickstand is different. Something's going on with that kickstand mount. I don't know. We'll have to figure it out, but uh, let's take a peek here. It's got the hole, but they welded it. Why would you weld that? Kickstand up, kickstand down. Yeah, that's how it goes. We're going to have to grind off that weld because someone probably welded. I, I don't know why they would weld that, but that's where the hole is right there. So we're going to have to drill that out. So the kickstand. Will fit onto it and then it comes up and, and locks in like that. So man, every single aspect of this had a problem with this. Don't use silicone gaskets on stuff like this. This could this could ruin this engine. Alright. We're going to press on. Because we're going to still use this mount. We're just going to... The hole is already there. We just got to drill it out. Because they welded on the back side. We're going to grind off that weld. It's just going to be a little bit of a nightmare. But it's alright. Alright. And I'm using my Milwaukee M12. Hey Milwaukee, if you're listening or watching. You want to support me? There you go. Send me some of your goodies. Um, for everybody else, this is the tool to have. Milwaukee 3 8 impact fuel. And it's got a little gauge on to tell you how much battery life I have left. Two bars. We're going to just take these bolts out. And this gun is awesome. It doesn't really think about things. It just does them. Which is kind of the way I work. I like it. To think. It's going to do. Now, we're, we're going to have to modify and sandblast this whole piece 
because this is going on to this bike and I want to look nice. Come on. So what we're going to do to it is we're going to put it in my sandblaster at a later date. I'll probably do it off, off camera. That way you no know, dust flies. And then we got the, i got to see how thick that is. But I wanted to show you that mount. See right here? They put a glob of weld on the back side. The pedestal right here for the spring. That's the groove for the spring. Excellent condition. And you can see where the hole right there was. And I don't know why they would do that. So, anyway, we're going to grind that weld off and make this thing so it accepts a kickstand again. Alright. So that's what I wanted to do to this engine to get this off my bench. Because I want to be able to work on Dave's bike without having any interruptions or any issues. Okay. Cool. Got that done. This engine is not junk. Alright. In fact, at another point, we're going to show you guys how to fix. Because I'm not replacing this case. This part right here that's broken, we're going to fix that. Okay, we're gonna get this engine running. This engine deserves to run. This engine was, this bike was loved. But this engine, I have to tell you guys, I thought about it, is not gonna go back on that bike. No. No, what we're gonna do with the other um, Z50 is we're gonna put that um, that uh, Honda MB5 engine, 50cc also, so they're both the same, but we're gonna make a two-stroke bike out of it. And uh, one thing I did want to do is I wanted to check out how far down that debris went. Is it all the way down the intake or is it only part way down the intake? Okay, these came right up. So let me get a, a socket and zap those out. Okay. A couple of 10 millimeter bolts. <laughs> a lot of corrosion, guys. Oh, yeah, that one, that one into the engine. Look at that, huh? Right through that intake. Wow, holy cow. And it's in there, guys. It is in there. All right, so let me blow up this intake real quick. Okay. That came out of the intake, so it's all nice and clear. And now we have all this stuff that's inside this engine so what we're going to do real quick is I, I don't want to leave that in there knowing it's in there i want to clean that out so i'm going to take the spark plug out and i don't like leaving stuff like that if you leave stuff like that it's only going to get worse i know you're probably thinking to yourself kevin's been you know sitting in a barn for 30 years yeah but it deserves better than that so that's what we're going to do we're going to do that okay take the plug out it did have some water in there. That's a red flag. Not a big deal though. Not the end of the world. Let me throw a rag over the... I'm going to use my hair compressor. Throw that over the top of it so it doesn't go everywhere. Okay. There we go. Oh yeah. Not liking that, guys, huh? Let's see if we can pick some of that out of there. Okay, let's pick it out. All that corrosion in there. You guys seeing all this? Look what I'm pulling out of this thing. I'm just pulling it right out, right through the intake hole. <laughs> That's corrosion, guys.
Okay. Now, let me see. Uh, take my socket off there. Excuse me. I'm walking M12 light. Hmm. <laughs> okay, hold on. Wow, okay. I gotta find something I can use to turn that over with. Harvey Spooner, he turned it over when it was at his place when he was showing this off in the video and it didn't have any compression or barely any and uh, these are the way I like getting them. I'm just tighten up the bolt right now. It's not not really cranking the engine over, if you will. Until it gets to the end. I gotta get a socket. Okay. Alright, get a socket. Now the intake valve is open. So what I'm doing is I'm looking down the intake and I can literally see the intake valve push down when I turn that. So for some reason this engine doesn't want to rotate all the way around anymore. Um, let, me, let me grab a head and I'll show you real quick. Okay, so here is a cam right here. This rotates and it's got these little lobes on there. And these are the rocker arms. So when this rotates, the big part open, pushes up on this rocker arm which fulcrums it down. Here's the valve uh, adjuster right here and you can see how it's got the valves on this side and it's pushing the valve open. Now that's what I was doing. I was looking in the intake to see when that valve opened. It just opened. So now I'm going to take the compressor and I'm going to blow some air in there and see if I can get any of the cylinder debris because right now the exhaust valve is closed. The intake valve is open so it's going to blow the stuff that's in the cylinder out. Hopefully. Okay, and then I'm gonna go down this way. Go out. Okay. Then I'm gonna check and I'm gonna look inside. Okay, now the valve looks clear and I can see right straight in there. Looks good, all right. Now I'm going to take some WD-40 because it's been dry for so long. And get that out of the spark plug hole. Alright, and that right there is all nice and clean and ready to go. Now what I'll do, I'll clean up that intake real quick. I'm going to see if I can rotate this engine all the way around again. Because it used to rotate all the way around. Now it won't rotate. Oh, look at that, now it's rotating. Okay. Beautiful. I don't think it rotates the other way. I think when it goes the other way, yeah. It stops the other way because of the pump. Or well, something's going on in there. I don't know. But it's supposed to rotate this way, and it does. Okay, now what I want to do is for, just for the sake of doing it, I'm going to put the tester on this and see if we have any compression. 
Okay, let's get this thing set up. So I'm using my little adapter. I am not expecting this thing to have any compression, just so you guys know. It didn't have any with Harvey Spooner when he, um, Harvey Spooner had it there at his place. And I'm not expecting it to have any here. Especially all I did was unblock the intake. I'm sure this thing's going to have low compression. Um, the other one hit 100 PSI. And now it hits a little bit more with a valve adjustment. So. Okay. Oh, oh. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> barely bumping the needle. All right. All right. I just want to try one more thing where it has like no compression. Right there will be where compression is. I'm going to pop this cap off real quick and on the bottom and see if there's any difference. Difference in like if, if I can clack them back and forth. If there's any play. Oh, yeah. oh, wow. That was on there for a very long time. Okay. <laughs> bottom one always comes out. For some reason. Bottom one's always come out. All right. Yeah, you can hear the play. So that one's good. Yeah, and I got play in the bottom one. All right. So most likely rings are stuck. That's where this is at. Um, I just what you call it. I I can feel that there's play. You hear clacking, which means that the valves are not too tight, which is good. But at the same respect, it's not working us. It's not helping us out with our cause here so it is very very low compression and um, hmm. let's see you want to try one more thing guys let's try one more thing I'm gonna try a bigger battery all right well I got a bigger battery I got my Milwaukee M12 4.0 battery And now I got full, full bars on the power. Let's see if this helps at all. Yeah. <laughs> all right, we got 50 pounds of compression. I got to uh, tighten up that bolt again, but came right out. <laughs> well, we got 50 pounds of compression from that little ordeal. I really can't complain about that. It's actually pretty good right there. I'd like to see 100. If we can get 100, that would be awesome. Everything is awesome. If we can get 100. Let's see. Let's, let's try to get 100 on this thing. Fifty's okay. But 100. Oh, that would make me happy. Oh, nope. That bolt is going to keep coming off because I need a flywheel to throw on this thing. Man. And I'm not taking the flywheel back off that. And I don't have a flywheel to put into it. So that kind of stinks. Hmm. Alright, let me see if I can come up with a plan. Okay. We'll try this. Okay, so now we have that. Let's see if we can... Okay, so my compression is still at 50. What can we do to this engine to increase compression? Oil in the intake. Let's do that. Okay, so here is a cylinder, 50cc by the way, and a piston. So this is exactly what the piston in this engine looks like. So what happens is the piston rings... These little guys right here, from sitting, are actually stuck to the piston in the closed position. 
So, when the piston travels up to, this is the cylinder head, when the piston travels up to the cylinder and compresses, instead of it building compression up at the top of the cylinder, it's actually going around the piston rings and back into the crankcase, back into here. So, it can't build compression. The compression is literally bypassing the rings and going right by it. By putting a little dab of oil in there, not a whole lot, but a little bit, what you're doing is, it's going to get caught on that little part of the rings that stick up, and it's going to allow the piston to go up the cylinder and compress, using the oil to hold back some compression. So you know, you're going to lose some anyway, but if the rings are stuck, and we put a little bit of oil in there, we're going to see the compression come up a little bit. All right. And you don't need a whole lot. I'm going to put probably a cap full. So I'll show you. I'm going to dump it right down that intake too. Typically you'd pour it in the spark plug hole. Okay. So i got a cap full here. I'm going to dump it in the intake. Right there. I think I got that all in there. Good, 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 good. Good, good. Okay, now we're gonna let that go into the cylinder for a moment. We're gonna put that up there just in case it's the valve that's actually causing it. And now we're gonna spin this engine up. Right now we're at 50 psi. So if this works, we'll see more compression. <laughs> yep. Did you see how fast that jumped up? So what's happening is, and no oil blew out of here, so that means this no no blow no oil blew on the table or on the intake, but it did bring it up to a hundred over 150 and climbing. Okay, I had to stop. So that means that my piston rings on this engine are stuck. Which might have just loosened up. Okay, so we have the Harvey Spooner 49cc engine now has great compression, okay, which is what we want. So now we have an engine that has compression. Um, this engine right here is going to be salvaged. We're not going to um, we're not going to throw it away, which I wouldn't have done anyway, because um, the Japanese gods. The, not Japanese gods, but the Japanese motorcycle gods, um, Mr. Honda himself, says, hey, if you want these bikes going, you got to get them both going. So that's my plan, okay? So let's go on to the next step real quick with this because we're going to be putting this thing away. So what I want to do is take my compression gauge back out. All right, so now we just got to prepare this engine to be parked for however long it's going to take us to get to it until we can get to it. Because, like I said, we have a lot to do to this particular engine. So we're going to take this off. I'm going to take the spark plug that came out of that engine right there instead of the rusted one that came out of that one. This one's fouled, but I just don't want to have anything like that in there, you know. So we'll put the spark plug in. Hand tight's fine. Then we'll take some electrical tape, make sure this is all nice and cleaned, and put, watch, watch what I do here. You guys are going to like this tip. Here's a little tip for you. I'm going to take my electrical tape, I'm going to put it over the top. I'm going to leave it a little tab hanging off the end. Okay, I'm going to go like that. I'll put the X like that. Okay. So, see how I got the X? Get you guys up here a little bit better. Hold on. Bear with me. Alright. So, what I did was I put an X on there, exposing the two bolt holes here. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that intake, and I'm just going to put the intake back over it, and screw the two screws back into it and now nothing can get into it because I don't want anything to go into that intake and this these bolts right here will just 
they'll keep the tape. They'll be nice and sandwiched, and then I don't have to worry about that that Debris. God, Debris is a pain in the neck. Okay, good. So we got that done, and now we got this big gaping hole right here. So let's take um, and clean this crud out right here. We want this to be a happy engine, not a not an angry engine. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to zap this bolt, which has already came loose, off. We're going to grab that magneto from that engine. And we're just going to pop it right in there. All right. And... There are supposed to be two washes, uh, not washes, but O-rings on each bolt part there. And then you got your ring here. But we don't care about that part of it right now. We just want to make sure that this hole is plugged up. It doesn't even have to be screwed in. Just enough to make it so that there's no debris can get in there. Now it's got the crank seal there, and that's all set. And then, so I don't lose it, I'm gonna stick this bolt right here, the nut on there. And this engine for right now is all sealed up, nothing's gonna happen to it. We're gonna put a bag over it and uh, put this away so I can get both of these engines off the bench and we can proceed to uh, start doing some stuff to Dave's. I got one more thing I gotta do after this. I hate misplacing or losing parts and pieces, okay? I hate that more than anything. You have no idea. There is nothing more frustrating than going, I know I just had that part. What did I do with it? Where are the screws to that? Where are the bolts to that? A good practice and a good engine builder. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to flip this engine over on side like this. And see these four bolts right here, these, these four flange. I'm going to put the bolts that hold on that, um, what you want to call it there, um, peg set into this motor right here. I'm just going to thread them in right now. I'm going to screw them in a little bit. I'm not going to over tighten them, but I'm just going to zap them in a little bit. Not a whole lot, more than three threads. Okay, because I have to take them back out. So I'm just going to go like that, like that. Like that now the washers and bolts are on this motor I don't have to worry about them where do they go don't matter okay the exhaust is facing down so I don't have to worry about that either okay so now we have an engine that is all set to go on the shelf until we're ready for it until we start to build the bike so we have a lot of parts and pieces um, that came in we have a lot more to go um, and as we when we get Further along, I'm going to go ahead and strip down the rest of the bike. Not tonight, of course. But I want to get this whole bench cleaned up. Because Dave's bike motor is coming onto this bench tomorrow night. Uh, not tomorrow night, Wednesday night. So we could do this. I keep putting it off. And i got to stop putting it off because I need to get that done. We have too many bikes, too many projects going on at the same time. And in order to get back onto these bikes, I still got the KE100, the KE102. i got a ton of bikes to work on. So... Let's just start over the winter. I want to get these projects finished up because guess what? Spring and summer, a whole bunch more bikes come. So, all right, let me get this off here. Okay, so a recommended oil that I use when I do when I do that trick is I use any two-stroke oil. This is for a chainsaw or a wee whacker. I prefer the two-stroke oil because it's going to have to burn. If you put the, uh, what do you call it there, regular motor oil in there, it tends to smoke a whole lot longer because it's harder to burn. So by using two-stroke oil to do that trick, it burns a little easier um, and it makes it less abrasive when you go when it actually starts. So that's my trick for that. I hope you guys learned something. If you guys have any questions about what I did, okay, um, you don't want to pour a whole bunch of this because you don't want the thing, the engine to hydro lock. Okay, so it's recommended about a tablespoon per cylinder if you're doing a compression. You can do this on a truck or car. 
You can use on a, a lawnmower to bring the compression up to see if it's actually your rings or your valves. Now, one of the things you'll see, okay, was that uh, song head. So, here's the thing. There's three parts to a compression, okay? A piston and two valves on a four-stroke. This is all in four-stroke, guys, okay? Um, so, if it's a piston ring, it's not going to leak oil out the intake or the exhaust, all right? If it's an intake valve, say this valve was stuck open and I spun this engine up, it's going to take that oil and pump it right out the intake, okay? And then you're going to be like, okay, intake valve's open. If um, I spun this engine over and all the oil just poured right out right onto the ground through the exhaust, then I would know that my exhaust valve was hanging up. You follow what I'm saying? Now, when one of these engines sits, okay, with water in them, it is very common for the exhaust valve to be stuck open. Okay, or just stuck in general. Because if water got through the intake valve and built up in there, it's going to rust it. it. The rust is going to go to the lower part. Okay, so the intake valve does stick too because the water came through here. But it's most likely common that the exhaust valve is going to give you some issue. Before, if you, have a, if you pull a spark plug out and your spark plug looks like this. Okay, it's just caca. All right. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look inside the spark plug hole and see if you can see any rust or anything, any debris in there. Like, I noticed right off the bat that there was debris in the intake. Well, then I didn't want to go ahead and, and just kind of mess with it. I wanted to see how far down it went. Because what would happen was, if that debris got between the, the intake valve, it could hold it open and then the piston could hit it. All right? Or... I would lose all my compression out my intake valve, which is most likely part of the problem. But we determined that the rings were stuck because when I put the oil in, no oil came out the intake, none out the exhaust. It just went past the cylinder. Once I put that oil in there, man, that compression, compression went whoop, right up. So this also works on two strokes, okay? Like when I was working on the Harvey Spooner MB5 motor, that engine didn't have any compression. I kicked it over, kicked it over. I think it was like 50 pounds, just like this one, about 50 pounds. And um, same thing. I poured a little bit of oil in there, two-stroke oil. Boom, I had my compression back. So then what I did was I gave it a little blast of starting fluid. You already got oil in there. It's a two-stroke. <laughs> so I, I, it kicked off because it had, it had the compression. And then it went Wah! until there was no more compression until it was back down to the 50. I did that a few times. What happened was the friction expanded the rings. When that expanded the rings, it broke all the crud free. And then my compression was building back up. So when I checked it again, I had like 75 pounds of compression. I'm like, all right, I'm on the right track. Let's keep doing that. So I did it like three or four more times until the compression was about 110, and then it came up. So it was pretty cool. All right, so bench is clean. And here is Dave's Suzuki TS-125 engine. So this is the next project right here. We're going to be separating the case so we can do the crank seals, get this all checked out, and uh, see whatever she needs and whatever we have to do to it. So we're going to be discussing things on this bike motor, um, like cranks, crank seals, um, how to change a, a kickstarter shaft. Just going through the whole entire bike, you know, we have to order some uh, seals. So we got the uh, gasket kit came in. We have the gaskets, we have the crank bearings, we have the seals. We're going to check the crank. We're going to be going through this entire engine. So I just wanted to show you guys that. That's the next one for Wednesday night. We'll be out here working and getting that all done. So always keep your motors covered over. And because um, you don't know, a big strong wind can come through that door, stir up a whole bunch of dust and dirt. And before you know it, your engine's covered. So like when we go to work on this engine, that door will be covered, uh, closed. So we don't have to worry about dirt or debris getting into it you know um also too if you're working on a bench like this 
you want to make sure that little things like this right here are pushed back out of the way. Okay, you don't want this stuff in your way. And the reason why is this little thing right here, one of these little needles, could literally fall into the engine when you're working. So you want to be aware of your surroundings, be aware of your space, and uh, work accordingly. Okay, like these cords right here, I have to put these, get these out of here, get all that stuff so it's out of my way. And I got to fix that light. I got a broken light, and uh, which is okay. We'll fix it. We have them. Actually, I have a spare one right here. So we're going to change that light out and um, possibly get a bulb, whatever it needs, and then we'll go and get that done so we have proper lighting. Because when you're doing inspecting, you want to make sure you get proper lights. So anyway, guys, I'm going to end it here. I'm going to go inside and get something to eat. It is quite dark out. I got my Christmas lights still going. So, uh, I'll show you. Look. <laughs> Everything's lit up. Even our shed, guys. Even the shed where I'm working is still lit up. So we got the, uh, the Christmas going on. All right. So I'm going to end it here, guys. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for hanging out with me on these builds and checking things out and... Hopefully you guys learned something tonight. And we're going to be back at it again. Tomorrow night we're doing the Two Stroke Tuesday. So, um, well, I'll see you later then. I'll talk to you guys later. I'm Kevin. I'm out.